Every year, billions rejoice at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, concluding the Good Friday Christian holidays. Yet almost all of them do not realize that the Bible tells a very different story than they usually hear from the pulpit. So why should we never celebrate Good Friday? The essence of Good Friday can be encapsulated uh, using the verse uh, John 3 verse 16, in which we are told that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. If this is the solution to the sin problem or to the problem between the division of God and his creation, it means that uh, we have a problem with people like Abel, Enoch who was righteous and walked with God, never tested death, prophets like Moses and many many others who were righteous before this event. What about the other billions who lived and died without hearing this event or Good Friday, the Good Friday story? So I want to look at it and ask the questions, when was the crucifixion? Where did Easter come from? Do we have our own divine way that excludes us from celebrating a Good Friday? A number of Christian denominations have good standing facts that Good Friday is a misnomer. They say that Jesus was not crucified on a Friday. Crucifixion occurred on a Wednesday. So Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, not Friday, not Saturday. You find a lot of Church of God, especially led by Herbert W. Armstrong, the late, teach this doctrine. What is not commonly accepted and known by Christendom is the effect of plagiarisms that are found in the New Testament. There are many Jesuses in the New Testament, a Jewish one and a Greco-Roman Jesus. The Greco-Roman is the one that dominates uh, today. You can watch our video, What Happens If Jesus Is Not A Christian? to find the clarity and the facts about the issue of the many Jesuses in the New Testament. This is the proof why we should never celebrate Good Friday. We are not Greco-Romans, we need no Greco-Roman savior, neither do we need a Jewish one. Here is the events of the crucifixion week as given by the churches of God and many others that 22 hour period in which Jesus was in the grave because they base it on the promise that Jesus gave in Matthew 12 verse 40 where he says as the sign of his messiahship is that for three days and three nights like this prophet Jonah he will be in the belly of the great fish so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus performed the Last Supper event on exactly the eve of the New Testament Passover, which was on a Wednesday, according to the week AD 31. And you can follow uh, this timeline and you see that Wednesday was the day of crucifixion and uh, before the end of that the eve there was the first day of the days of unleavened bread in which he was already in the grave buried on the wednesday night and so you can count your 72 hours and he will resurrect on the sabbath uh, following the annual holidays so the three days and three nights really will fit if you use that schema but this is a jewish jesus because immediately we have got a Roman Jesus who was crucified on a Friday and rose on Sunday. And they calculate it and prove beyond any reasonable doubt that their belief that he rose on Sunday is a standing fact. As we already explained, there were many Jesuses in the New Testament. So they pick and choose whoever they want. Where did Easter come from? We look at the denominations and the dominating Jesus that is found within those denominations. And we find that the first early century, first century church never observed Easter or Easter Sunday or Sunday or any of the Christian holidays because it was dominated by the Jewish Jesus. And the Jewish Christians continue to observe the annual festivals as given in Leviticus chapter 23. And those, say for the 300 years, Christianity was a Jewish sect. Eventually it was infiltrated by Roman agents and converted into modern Christianity via the Hellenization process that gave it the New Testament. So today almost all Christians, every Christian is a Catholic. Here is the contrast between the Jewish 
Jesus based Christianity they define Easter as Easter or pronounced now in English as Easter they say Easter was originally the celebration of Easter the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility and sex her symbols like the egg and the bunny were and still are fertility and sex symbols or did you actually think eggs and bunnies had anything to do with the resurrection these are the Jewish based Jesus followers that pushed these teachings against those that follow the Constantine or the Roman one. After Constantine decided to Christianize the empire, Easter was changed to represent Jesus, but at its roots it has all the celebrations of fertility and sex. Now let's look at the common, modern, popular Christians today. They say Easter is the oldest and most important Christian holiday. Why? Because it celebrates the events Christianity is based on. Crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. We should never celebrate Good Friday. Straightforward, the facts are clear. So now we look at uh, one of the scholars, modern scholars, who deals with these issues, specifically on the issue of the Sabbath. From Sabbath to Sunday by Dr. Samuel Bakioki, a critical review. He writes in the Pontifical Gregorian University Press in Rome, there is a wide consensus of opinion among scholars that Rome is indeed the birthplace of Easter Sunday. Some, in fact, rightly label it as Roman Easter. This you can read on page 201, this book or review. The Good Friday called Feria 6 in Paraskev in the Roman Missal, He Hagia Kaimegale Paraskiu, the Holy and Great Friday in the Greek liturgy, Holy Friday in Romance languages, Kafreitag Sorrowful Friday in German is the English designation of Friday in Holy Week. That is the Friday on which the church keeps the anniversary of the crucifixion of Jesus. So you can see now that whenever you celebrate Good Friday or Easter Sunday or whatever festival, you are either subscribing to the Jewish Jesus or to the Roman Jesus. The facts are so clear. Once more, here's a fact. This is one of the reasons why we should never celebrate Good Friday because it, in essence, it is ancestral worship borrowed out of African religions, cultures, philosophies, traditions, ideas, which were plagiarized via the Jewish Jesus and continue to dominate the world via the Roman Jesus. So here is where it began and here is how it started. It started by the man or a ruler, a Greek ruler known as Ptolemy 1 Sota 304 to 84 BCE who became Serapis Christus and via the Christianization of Zeus and overtaken by Rome via the Caesar Borgia fraternity. That's why you get the picture and the images of the modern Jesus coming from the doctrine and teachings of Ausaris. This is the Egyptian god who was made by our ancestors under the behest of Ptolemy so that they can have an ancestor who was connected with our belief systems. And then you have the Roman Jesus who comes up like that. So that's the reason why we cannot subscribe to these two fundamental ethos of uh, Christianity. The biggest threat to all righteousness is sin. And the uh, we have our own divine way that excludes us from celebrating Good Friday to deal with sin. We have proof our righteousness predates Good Friday. The concept of sin amongst our ancestors, as amongst us as melanin dominant human beings, is that sin for the African traditional religionists is not a state of being as in Christianity. Rather, it is primarily blasphemies or breach of vows against the gods or ancestors, murder, theft, and all offenses against persons or property are matters which have to be settled primarily by the family and society. You can go to this author, he explains all that. It would appear that the gods and ancestors are mainly concerned about the, their dignity and about offerings to be paid to them and that men's concerns must be rectified and punished by men. So if you sin against somebody, 
it is your responsibility to go to that person and ask for forgiveness. There is no other mediator because the sinner is you. The devil is you. If you do a good thing, it is you. It is important to be clear about the use and the meaning of concepts in this realm. These involve both abstractions and concreteness of expression. Magesa 1998. Note that what is elsewhere, especially in Christianity, is conceptualized and explained as sin or evil, for example, is better expressed in African religion by the concept of wrongdoing. Kukanganisa. Not chivi, but kukanganisa. Chivi comes when kukanganisa is not rectified. It now comes as a noun on you and you have to verbalize it to remove it by action. When you do the action of going to the neighbor and asking for forgiveness, that dissolves it. Or badness, kuipa, or distraction of life, kuraya wupenyu, ubi, being evil. So that is sin. It is you, not elsewhere, not anyone else, no devil, nothing. It is you. We shall show you how other spirits are removed from you if they are causing you to be an evil uh, person. We now go to the scholar J. Omosade Aolalu, where he deals with the sin and its removal in African traditional religion. When we speak of African traditional religion, we mean the indigenous religion of the Africans. It is the religion that has been handed down from generation to generation by the forebearers of the present generation of Africans. It is not a fossil religion, a thing of the past, but a religion that Africans today have made theirs by living it and practicing it. This is a religion that has no written literature, yet it is written everywhere for those who care to see and read. It is largely written in their people's myths and folk tales, in their songs and dances, in their liturgies and shrines, and in their proverbs and pithy sayings. It is a religion whose historical founder is neither known nor worshipped. It is a religion that has no zeal for membership drive. Yet it offers persistent fascination for Africans, young or old. What are its fundamentals? Succinctly put, they are that this world was brought into being by the source of all beings known as the Supreme Being. This Supreme Being is given different names by different ethnic groups in Africa. These names are meaningful and they reflect his attributes or her attributes and the people's concepts of this. We have explained this many, many times in many of our videos. They say that ancestral cult is highly developed in Africa. That the divinities and spirits together with the ancestral spirits are in the are in the super sensible world with the supreme being but are not uninterested in what goes on in the world of man or humanity. That the divinities and the ancestors have laid down some rules of conduct and the guiding principles for the benefit of men and women and for the maintenance of peace and concord in the community. That's total well-being. That is the essence of what we are sharing here. So we can easily remove sins. Hence, we should never celebrate or need a good Friday. The Sukuma a tribe in Tanzania, teaches that if their descendants continues to suffer maladies caused by ancestors, it is because the descendants have neglected the ancestors. For example, the living may have disregarded the possessions of the ancestors, failed to observe the lineage rules, or neglect to conduct the rituals in the name of the ancestors. A descendant may suffer because of the past grievances that they have not rectified. Ignoring your totems is also a sin. You have to know your totem, mtupo is temo, because that's the identity that you also have spiritually. The way of dealing with such afflictions caused by such sins concerning your lineage and your ancestry is by performing cleansing rituals and ceremonies usually officiated by ritual elders, medicine men, priests or diviners or old people that know these traditions. Whereas ancestral and sometimes nature spirits need to be placated through sacrifices and offerings, those spirits that are merely malevolent, in other words, evil, 
must be expelled or driven away so that they will not cause affliction. The Ateso word for this is Akara, a deke, literally meaning to throw away the calamity or the god of calamity. So you have to cast out these devils, you have to remove these devils. This is the role of African diviners and priests and teachers and elders. When such a spirit of affliction is diagonized, it must be disowned and made to go where it belongs. That is, it is supposed to be sent out into its own habitat. Sometimes you have to use very dirty language in order to show that this spirit is not welcome in this person or in this area. You can read Magesa 1987-89. It is also important to note the importance of prayers in African religiosity. Prayer in Africa is the commonest way or act of worship. When life is threatened or weakened by evil and by sin, prayer is most abundant both in public and in your private life. Prayer becomes a means of restoring wholeness and balance in life. The African prayer is comprehensive, requesting the removal of evil and sin, and demanding the restoration of all that is good or was good prior to the affliction. Nothing less satisfies the African religious mind. It is significant to note that the very act of prayer sheds light on the centrality of relationships in the African moral vision. Because ancient Africans knew what was right and wrong and expected punishment in the afterlife if records of wrongdoings such as adultery, lies, thefts, or even covetousness were brought against them, they had very high moral levels. This and many other facts that we have given here render the doctrine and practice of Good Friday useless. You can do it, but it's useless because you have already your own way. If you would like personal counsel, about how to walk in your natural, melanin-dominant cultural and spiritual congruence and connect with others who are practicing this powerful Asian philosophy, send us an email on join at marifado.com. Till we meet again, your Ha Manager Topi, to Ms. Lukun Kenim Jakanja, subscribe to our channel, Committee Hebrew Ethics. We have our own way of removing sin. Have a good day. Siabonga, gender, enkos. Asante sana, stupid. Thank you. Now you can listen to all you want.